Now, I want to read also in the book of St. Matthew's Gospel, the 11th chapter of St. Matthew, 26 and 27. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and has revealed them unto thee. Even so, Father, for so it seems good in thy sight. Catch those two scriptures. Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Then Jesus thanked God that he had hid the mysteries from the wise and prudent and would reveal it to babes such as would learn, for it seemed good to God to do that. Now from this text, uh, from this scripture reading, I draw this text. God hiding himself in simplicity, then revealing himself in the same. It is strange to think how that God does such a thing as that. God will hide himself in something so simple that will cause the wise to miss it a million miles. And then turn right back around in that some simple thing in the simplicity of his way of working and reveal himself right out again. And as I have made the old statement many times that man still remains man. Man is always giving God praise for what he did do and always looking forward to what he will do and ignoring what he's doing. Amen. They fail to see what a simple thing he used to do it with. And then they look forward and see a great thing coming that's going to happen, and nine times out of ten it's already happening right around them, and it's so simple that they don't know. Yeah, One day a, a man up here in Utica, and he claimed that there was no such a thing as God. And I understood that by this the man was gloriously converted to Christ at the age of about 85 years old. He asked a little girl one day who was uh, coming from Sunday school, why did she waste her time on doing such a thing as that? She said, because she believed that there was a God. And Mr. Darcy said, that he said, child, you are so wrong to believe in such a thing as that. And said that the little girl stooped down and picked up a, a little flower out of off of the ground, pulled it from its petals, and said, Mr. Darcy, could you tell me how this lives? There it was. When he began to search back, he could have said to the child, what's growing in the earth? And then the questions could revolve back, where did the earth come from? How'd that seed get there? How'd it happen? On, 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 and run it on back until he's seen. See? Not the great glamorous things that we think about, but it's the simple things that God is so Amen. real. The simplicity. So it pleases God to reveal Himself and then hide Himself. Then hide Himself and reveal Himself in simple little things. It's, it's put over the top of the head of man because if you say, why would a just God do that? is because that man was made up in the beginning not to try to shift for himself. A man was made to rely completely upon God. That's the reason we're lacking into lambs or sheep. A sheep cannot lead himself. He has to have a leader. And the Holy Spirit is supposed to lead us. So man is made that way, and God made all of his works so simple that the simple could understand it. And God makes himself simple with the simple in order to be understood by the simple. We stumble over simplicity. God is so simple until the scholars of these days and all days miss him a million miles. But listen to the simple of God 
And then you find God. Amen. Now you're in the simple ways. And I'm not here to contradict school and education and try to support illiteracy. I'm not here for that. But what it is, the people as so place so much upon that until they're even in the seminaries and so forth, they're missing the very thing that God has put before them. Now, today we preach philosophy, we preach creed and denominationalism and so many things and leaving off the word because they say it can't be understood. It can be understood. He promised to do it. Now, we're asking him to do it. Now, we're going to take a few characters here for a few minutes. Let's notice in the days of Noah, Noah's day, God seen worldly wisdom so greatly punctuated and respected, he sent a simple message by a simple person to show them his grace. Found an illiterate, maybe farmer, by the name of Noah, a sheep herder. And the simple message of, of building an ark, constructing a, something to get into that there's no water to float it, why he become a fanatic and he become a oddball. Now, then again in Moses' day, notice another time of deliverance when God is just about to do something to deliver his people, God sends a message to the people and it's so simple, as we'll catch the break of these seals, that's my purpose of bringing this first, that we find out that the breaking of those seals is so simple, the, the, the Amen. smart miss of a million miles. Amen. I hope that God anoints me uh, far. See? see, it just goes over the top. And that's reason I thought this message this morning would be appropriate to lay a foundation on the simplicity of God. How God hides himself in simplicity. Now, notice Moses in the day that God was going to deliver the children of Israel according to his word. He, what did he do? He chose a simple family. We have no record of him. He's just a son of Levi, that's all we know. And so uh, we, uh, and his wife, just an ordinary, uh, probably a, a mud dog as the world would think, out there making brick for the enemy. He's just an ordinary slave in Israel. But God chose that family to bring forth the deliverer. Just an ordinary Jewish family. He never went and got royalty and celebrity or something or even got some priest. He took a common, ordinary family. Simplicity. Now, he always works in simplicity. But God, in the beginning, that could have made the sun preach the gospel, or the winds preach the gospel, or an angel preach the gospel, but he ordained man for that purpose, and he never changed it. We could take a, a look at Cain and Abel, how that, that Cain tried to please God by some beauty. Another way, people think by a great fine dress congregation by a priest with, with uh, ministers with robes and robe choirs and all the, the put on that pleases God. Can you see where it comes from? Cain tried the same thing. And he built him an altar. No doubt that he made it pretty. And the man was sincere. He worshipped. He thought as long as I'm sincere it doesn't make any difference. It does make a difference. You can be sincerely wrong. But able by revelation, by faith, offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. Nothing clean about it, as far as it looked, humanly speaking. But it pleased God to reveal His secret to Abel by simple faith in the shed blood. Notice, Elijah's day, God chose to hide himself in a simple person. Now just think of it. Can you grasp it? God hiding in a illiterate 
And Elijah humbled himself and stayed with what God said in such a way that it pleased God to take that same spirit from Elijah and promise to shove it three times down the road from him. Amen. 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 And he did it. Amen. 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 Sure he did. Sure. He promised it that it would come and it come upon Elisha, his successor. Then come on John the Baptist according to Malachi 4, supposed to be here again in the last days. Love, God loved that spirit that was up on that simple, uneducated woodsman from back there in the woods somewhere. And so it was so obedient to his word that he could say, Elijah do this and Elijah would do it. And God hid himself in there in such simplicity. God in simplicity. He does the same thing the way up and down. Always humble yourself. Don't never say, well, I got this and that. You ain't got nothing. Just, just remember, if you got the grace of God, just be thankful for it. Amen. But when he came on the scene in such simplicity, <laughs> they missed him. They missed him. Loud wood. Banks from me sitting down there and know that God... A vindicated truth when a little old dead men of fish laying on the water and the Holy Spirit spoke the day before he is going to show him his glory and do something about it. And there that morning standing there, the Holy Spirit come down in that boat and raised up and spoke to that fish and it laying on the water dead for a half hour. His gills and entrails pulled out of its mouth. It come to life and swim away as good as any other fish. Amen. What is it? God hiding himself in simplicity. Amen. Are you ready? Ready. I want shock you a little bit. The rapture will be the same way. It'll be so simple. No doubt it'll be likewise. Till the rapture will come one of these days and nobody will know nothing about it. Now don't, don't, don't get up now but study just a minute. I'm sure enough close it. The rapture will come in such a simple way till the judgment will fall and they'll see the Son of Man and they'll say, wasn't we supposed to have such and such and wasn't there supposed to be a lie sent to us and wasn't there supposed to be a rapture? Jesus will say, it's already happened and you didn't know it. God, in simplicity, It'll be a secret because he said he'd come like a thief in the night. He's already told us this. The rapture. Then judgments will strike. Sin, plague, sickness, and everything. And people will cry for death to take them. When the judgment... Lord, why is this judgment upon us when you said that there would be a rapture first? You say, it's already time. And you didn't know it. God hiding himself in simplicity. Oh, all right. The all, it's already happening. You do it now. Why don't believers believe the simple signs of His coming? Where is our faith to believe the simple Word of God? Just what God said, take Him at His Word. God hides Himself now in simplicity in a humble little bunch. But one of these days, He'll manifest Himself as He always has in the days past. Do you love it? Yeah. Yeah. And now tonight, we are have uh, starting on the subject of the breach between uh, the uh, seven church ages and the seven seals. Now, now we're going to turn to the fifth chapter. Now this is not the seven seals. It is the breach between the church ages and the seven seals. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat upon a throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who's worthy to open the book and to loose the seals that are. And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under, neither under the earth, 
was able to open the book, neither to look upon. What a book. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open it and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto with me, Weep not, behold the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne of the four beasts, in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb, as it had been slain in heaven, seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat up on the throne. The seventh angel begins to sound. There's the messages wrote out there. We got to take book form. Now at the beginning of the sounding of the message, the mystery of God should be finished. And we realize that in the scriptures over in Malachi 4, there's to be a one like John, an Elijah, to whom the word of God can come to. And he is to reveal by the Holy Spirit all the mysteries of God and restore the faith of the children back to the faith of the apostolic father. Amen. Restore back all these mysteries that's been probed at through these denominational years. Now, we see that this seven seal book now is the mystery of redemption. It's a book of redemption from God. Now, all the mysteries at this time should be finished at the sounding of this message. Now here's the angel on earth and another angel, mighty messenger, come down. See, this angel was an earthly angel messenger but here comes one down from heaven rainbow covenant okay? only Christ it could be just exactly like it was in Revelation's first chapter standing in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks with a rainbow to look upon as Jasper and Sardis stone and here he returns back in the tenth chapter after the coming time and all the mysteries is to be finished and the seals are to be broken and proclaiming that it's time is no more. And he said, when the seventh angel has begun to sound, then the mystery should be finished and time for the angel to appear. Now, notice, the seven seals holds the mystery of the book until we can see what those seven seals have sealed in we're only presuming them but god in every statement and everything has to vindicate it to make it right so his children will watch those things be alert and the book will not the seals will not be released until the message of the seventh angel but the genuine revelation of God will be made perfect in that sound. Vindicated truth. And this seven seal book, remember, it was closed here in Revelations, the fifth chapter. And in Revelations, the tenth chapter, it is open. Now we're going to see what the book says about how it become open. And is not made known until the Lamb takes the book and breaks the seals and opens the book. The Lamb's got to take the book. Now, and it is not made known until the Lamb takes the book and breaks the seals because remember, the book was being holded in the hands of him that sat upon the throne. And the Lamb comes to him that sits upon the throne and takes the book out of his right hand. Takes the book. 
Oh, that's deep. We'll try to solve it out if we can by the help of the Holy Spirit. There will be the sounding of the seventh angel's voice and then the book will be revealed at that time. Now, don't say nobody that people ain't saved back there. But the mysteries that they couldn't understand, how that God can be three and yet one, oh, so many things. How can Eve eat an apple and uh, uh, cause the, the wreckage of the whole world? How can these things be? And the seals are to be opened by the Lamb and revealed to the church and then time is no more. How wonderful. Now let's read uh, a scripture got written down here. Ephesians 1, 13 and uh, 14. Now, in whom we also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation in whom after that you believe you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchase possession unto the praise of his glory see now while we got the scriptures open let us uh, see the Holy Spirit here itself is a seal. The Holy Spirit is a seal. And a seal signifies what? A finished work. The Holy Spirit being a seal to the individual. Like I used to work for the railroad company. And uh, we'd load boxcars with cans and different things from the canning factory and but then before that car could be sealed, the inspector come around to see if that car was properly loaded. And that inspector would test everything to see if it was properly in place. If it wasn't, he condemned the car. Then we had to do it all over again until the inspector was satisfied. Then when the inspector is satisfied, he shuts the door. The inspector shuts the door. And the inspector places a seal upon it, and then no one can break this seal until it reaches its destination. That's what the Holy Spirit's been doing. Okay? He goes and he inspects. The Holy Spirit inspects that person until he's thoroughly satisfied and knows that they are, then they are sealed unto their eternal destination. There's not nothing can ever break that seal. The Bible, you put your scripture, Ephesians 4.30, said, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed until the day of your redemption. Hold that word redemption. See? Until the day that the book of redemption has been revealed and the Redeemer comes to claim his possession. Another thing a seal uh, signifies is ownership. When you are bought by the blood of Jesus Christ and sealed by the Holy Ghost, you no longer belong to the world or anything pertaining to the world. You are owned by God. Another thing is a seal is a security. Seal means you are secure. You don't believe in eternal security, I don't know. But, uh, but a seal signifies security to its destination. Woe well, unto that God that would try to break that seal. And the Holy Spirit seal cannot be broken. You know, I've heard me say that people said, the devil made me do this. No, no. The devil didn't do it. You just wasn't sealed either. Because when you're sealed in, he's sealed out. Now, you went out to him. <laughs> he couldn't get into you because the only way to get into you is come through the same process that you have. He'd have to be saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Then he'd be your brother. <laughs> so see, so he, he didn't do it. You just went to the borderline and come back lusting for the things of the world. He never went all the way over into Canaan. You see, he crossed Jordan, the death of self. 
Now, notice. Now this book is sealed, and and you are sealed with the book until the day of redemption. Now, eight Romans eight twenty two to begin. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. Oh, 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 oh. Don't that make us old folks feel good? Don't that make us all feel good? Waiting for this hour. We understand this will take place at the first resurrection. See, nature is growing. We are growing. Everything is groaning because we realize there's something not right. And the only way you can groan and wait for it is because there has been new life coming here that speaks of a new world. Now, break the seals and release all the mysteries to them, to the seventh angel, whose message is to reveal all the mysteries of God. The mysteries of God lays in these seven seals. See? That's what he said here. All the mysteries lays in these seven seals. And when he becomes alive, he takes the book. That's his rights. God's hell is the mystery. But now the Lamb comes. Nobody can take the book. It's still in the hands of God. If this book, Mysteries, is the Word of God, the seventh angel has to be a prophet for the Word of God to come to. Yeah. 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 No priest, pope, or anything else can get it. Yeah. The Word don't come to such. Yeah. The Word of God comes only to a prophet. Yeah. Always. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Malachi 4 promised such. Yeah. Until I meet you, God be with you. And tonight we're starting on the sixth chapter of Revelation. Now, as we study uh, this chapter, we're referring different places, even to Old and New Testament alike, because the entire book is the revelation of Jesus Christ. That's all together the revelation of, of the Lord Jesus. The revelation of Jesus Christ. It's God revealing Himself in the book. Revealing Himself through Christ in the book. And Christ is the revelation of God. He come to reveal God because He and God were the same. God was in Christ reconciling the world to Himself. You see, the book actually was planned and written before the foundation of the world. Amen. This book, the Bible, was really written before the foundation of the world. And Christ being the Lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. And the, the members of His bride, their names were put in the Lamb's book of life before the foundation of the world, but it's been sealed up. And now it's being revealed. Whose names were in there? All about it. What a great thing. And there about 12 o'clock in the day, the Holy Spirit just swept right down into the room and the whole thing is opened up to me there. So, of, this, of this first seal being opened, I'm as positive as I'm standing here tonight that this is the gospel truth that I want to say. I, I just know it. Now, we find the Lamb with the book now. And now in the uh, sixth chapter we read, 
And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard as it were the noise of a thunder, and one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that set on him had a bull, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. But it isn't this kind of a book. It's a scroll. And then when the scroll is unwound, that's one, that laying right in the scroll is number two, and right here it says what it is, but it's a mystery. So a revelation is something that's made known of something, something that's been revealed. And now notice, so you won't forget it, it is closed up until the latter time. The whole mystery of it is closed up until the latter times. We find that in the scripture here. Now, the mystery of the book are revealed when the seals are broken. And when the seals completely are broken, the time of redemption is over because the Lamb left the intercession boat to walk out to take his claim. He was a mediator between that. But when the real revelation happens, on the seals, as they begin to break, the Lamb is coming forth from the sanctuary. Now he said there is a white horse rider, but what the mystery of it is, is a mystery that goes with that rider. Now, what it was they didn't know, but it's to be revealed. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals. What about that thunder was? St. John 12, chapter. And just hold it. St. John, the 12th chapter, when the thunder, remember, a loud, laughing noise of a thunder is the voice of God. The first seal, when it was opened in the symbol form, it thundered. Now, what about when it's opened in its reality form? It thundered as soon as the lamb struck back the seal. And what did it reveal? Not all of itself. First it's of God, next it's in a symbol, then it's revealed, three things. And only is to be revealed at the last day when this actual seal is broken. Broken to who? Not to Christ, but to the church. Oh, my, that just makes me tremble. I want a thunderclap, no doubt, John might have jumped up in the air. What a thunder roar. And then one of the four beasts said, Now, come see what it is. What's revealed beneath here? Oh, John, write what you see. So, John goes to look see what it was. John goes to see what the thunder said. It's then that this creature told John, come and see what the mystery is under the first seed. The thunder, the voice of the Creator has uttered it. Now, what does this white horse mean? And he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given him. He didn't have it then. Unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. Now what does a white horse mean? Now here's where the revelation comes. But my revelation of, by the Holy Spirit is not that way. My revelation by the Holy Spirit is Christ and the Holy Spirit is the self-same person, only in a different form. So here stands Christ, the Lamb. We know He was the Lamb. He's standing here with the books in His hand, and there goes the white horse rider. So it wasn't the Holy Spirit. And so how could Christ be out there, the white horse conquering, and standing here with a book in His hand? It isn't, though. It isn't Christ. Notice. Now, the Holy Spirit and the revelation and Christ is the Holy Spirit is Christ in another form. Right. Notice, it is the Lamb that opened the book. And the Lamb is Christ. And Christ is not seen anymore. From that, but he is seen in the book of Revelations, the 19th chapter coming on a white horse. And he that sat on him was called faithful, true, 
righteous does he judge and make war. His eyes were flames of fire, and on his head was many crowns. Look at the diadem. And he had a name written that no man know but himself. I know this. No man know but himself. And he was clothed with the vesture dipped in blood, and his name was called the Word of God. Notice. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, and out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he tread the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of Almighty God. And he had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. There comes the Messiah. There he is. Not this fellow on this horse back here. Notice, the rider on the white horse don't have any name. He might use two or three titles. But he hasn't got any name. But Christ has a name. What is it? The Word of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word is with God, and the Word was God. And the Word made flesh. The rider has no name. But Christ is called the Word of God. Who is this mysterious rider of the first church age then? You want me to tell you who he is? He's the Antichrist. Exactly what he is. Now, because you see, if an Antichrist, Jesus said, that the two would be so close together and so it would deceive the very elected, the bride, if it was possible. Antichrist. It's the Antichrist spirit. Glory. Amen. Notice, and when this Holy Spirit that we have becomes incarnate to us, the one that's in our midst now in the form of the Holy Ghost becomes incarnate to us in the person of Jesus Christ, we will crown him king of Amen. Right. What are we saying? Who is this rider? This horse rider. You know what it is? It's Satan's super education. This is a Satan Superman with education, with wisdom, with church theology of his own word, of his own making. And he rides his white denominational horse to deceive the people. And the Antichrist takes it all. And the Bible says that he deceived Paul. Ain't of them. Paul upon the face of the earth whose names were not written under those seals. Now, notice, he'll conquer and almost has in his grip right now while he's still Antichrist before he can become peace. Let me one thing you can conquer those that's got their names written in the Lamb's Book of Life from the foundation of the world. I notice, in the same time this is going on, just before this takes place, brother, on the earth, God has promised. While all them scruples of denominations arguing their difference about their creed, God promised that he would send us a true prophet of the true word with a message to return to the original word of God and the faith of the fathers to bring down the power of the Holy Ghost amongst the people with a power that will raise her above these things and take her in. Don't forget it, friend. Don't forget it. Take it home with you. Stay with it. Hold it on your pillar. Don't forget it. Stay with it. God bless you. Now, tonight we are studying this uh, second seal. And it, for the first four seals, there is four horse riders. Then I grab me a pencil right quick and start writing down as fast as I can while he's there. He's doing something real supernatural now, too. And, uh, so we're just expecting great things. Now, I'll read the third verse now. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse, fourth verse, that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, that they should kill one another. And... Uh, they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. And he didn't see what it was, 
He just saw a symbol. And that symbol, for the reason it was, he said, come see, but he saw a symbol that he was to symbolize it to the church. And remember, the secrets was to be revealed in the last day. And how does he reveal his word, his secrets? The Bible. Notice, the first church, when the Catholic church says that they were the first original church, they're exactly right. They were. They began at Pentecost. That's where the Catholic church began. Now, I once didn't hardly believe that. I read history and I found out it's right. Now, let's go to the second seal. When the slain, risen lamb opened it and the second uh, calf-like beast said, come see what the seal mystery is. Now, we get it. The lamb, remember, has to open every seal. The second first was a lion. The next was a was a was like a calf or an ox or something. You see. We find here that he saw what a red horse go forward. Let's just read and see what he says here. And there went out the fourth verse. There went out another horse that was red. The first one is white. And power was given unto him that set their own to take peace from the earth and they should kill one another, and there was given him a great sword. Now, this symbol here, and we want to look at him real close. Let us now consider what John saw then, if these things, what he saw. A red horse and his rider goes forth, power given to him to slay with a great sword. Now, here's my revelation of it. This is Satan again. Amen. It's a devil. Again in another form. Now we know that that uh, seals pertain, as I said the other night, and trumpets pertain to, 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 to civil wars, you see, amongst the people, among nations. But you find out here that this man has a sword, so it pertains to church political war. Now, you might not think that, but just watch it a minute. Notice the change of color of these horses. Same rider. Change of color of horses. And a horse is a beast. And the beast in the Bible and her symbol represents a power. The same system riding on another color, power from the innocent white to a bloody red. Amen. See? Watch him now. He's coming. When he first started, he was just, uh, well, he's just a little doctrine in a, in a much called the Nicolaitanism. Of course, it wouldn't slay anything. That's Revelation 2, 6, if you want to put it down. Then after a while, he was given a crown. Of course, you can't put a crown on a spirit's head. But when this spirit become incarnate, the second work of his of his dispensation, of his mystery, the second work, he become a crowned false prophet to the working of the Antichrist spirit. Now, we see him now. Now, he becomes that, when he takes that, then he uh, is already Satan controls the political powers of the world. Now he gets into a place that he's going to make a universal church power. Taking religious power. And do you not understand, my brothers, that in when this nation appears in the 13th chapter of Revelation, this little animal raised up like a lamb. And it's got two horns civil and ecclesiastical power. But he done the same thing the beast did before him. Now when he did that, he did not have the ecclesiastical power yet. But he started in with a demon of a false teaching. And that teaching become a doctrine. That doctrine become incarnate in a false prophet. And then 
He went just to the right place. He never went to Israel now. He went to Rome. Nicaea, Rome. The council was held and they elected a head bishop. And then by doing this, they united church and state together. Then he dropped his bowl. He got off his white horse. He got on his red horse. Or he can kill anybody that don't agree with him. There's your seal. Same fella. Watch him ride on into eternity. See? Unites both his powers together. Now, we find out he unites his power. Then when he becomes both state and church, the ecclesiastical, then what are you going to do? He forms his own religion. And now he can do whatever he wants to. Then he has the right to put to death whosoever will not agree with him. That's exactly what he did too. He went back down to Hippo and he was the very one that signed that that paper that had the revelation from God that it was all right and pleasing God to put every person to death that didn't believe with the Roman Catholic Church. Now listen, I'm quoting from the martyrology. From the time of of St. Augustine of Hippo until 1586 on the Roman martyrology the Roman Catholic Church put 68 million Protestants to death. Was his sword red? Was he riding a red horse? What was it? The same power. The same rider. There's the seal. They admit 68 million on the martyrology besides all those put to death outside of that. Oh, mercy. During the dark ages, there were millions fed the lions and slaughtered in every way because they wouldn't bow down to that Catholic dogma. Now let me say something, brother. There's something fixing to happen. And all these big old ecclesiastical walls are going to collapse. And go right back over here and agree because you're going to do it as certain as I'm standing here. There's an image to that beast that's as certain as I'm standing here in this nation tough it, according to the word of the law. Listen. When you feel that little funny feeling, you get away from them walls. Get away, you'll die out of there. Don't do it. Come out of it. Get away from all this stuff. Flee to safety as quick as you can. Ask God for mercy. Let's bow our heads. <laughs> Heavenly Father, oh, I, I just sometimes, Lord, stand here and, and I tremble. I think of that awful hour that's approaching and uh, there's no way to stop it. It's predicted that it would come. And I thought, of why don't the people come and, and, and listen and won't they come and accept it? But of course I know that, that you, you said they wouldn't, so they won't. But there is some that's got their names written on the Lamb's Book of Life. And when them seals are thrown open there, they see their name there and the Holy Spirit speaks to them, they come. You can't keep them away, no one can, no one. We, we want you to search our hearts. And if there's anything wrong, Lord, let us know now. Please don't let us come to that hour. Yonder one is too late. Search me, try me, Lord. We want to be able when that mysterious thunder, thunders out under and the church is taken up, we want to be ready to receive it, Lord. Grant it. Grant it, I pray, that God will give you this charge in Jesus Christ's name. We have come again tonight, Lord, to attempt uh, this meeting and to pray thee to open to us Lord this uh, third seal of this book that it might be uh, known to us that we would know uh, what to do and how to live and how to be better Christians now tonight we're going to read 
uh, from this blessed old word again in the sixth chapter and we start tonight with the third seal and that is the fifth verse the fifth and sixth verse now in the fifth verse and when he had opened the third seal I heard the third beast say come see and I beheld in lo a black horse and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand and I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts saying a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny but see thou hurt not the oil and wine and there was no man in heaven no man on earth no man beneath the earth or nobody was even worthy to look at the book see now just think of that then the lamb comes forward and he takes the book. Now, John was asked not to weep anymore. He said, Behold, the line of Judah has prevailed. And, and he can take the book and open it. So he turned to look for a lion and he saw a lamb. The elder called, said, A lion has prevailed. But when he came and looked, it was a lamb coming out from the throne. For he was bleeding for the people intercessing for the people until the last soul that was put on the Lamb's book of life before the foundation of the world come in there's just going to be so many of them there and that's it that's all the others won't even want to come in they have no desire to come in and so then when that last soul comes in, then the time of redemption is finished. Then the Lamb comes forth to claim His rights to what He has redeemed. And that's all creation. Then He said He is worthy to take the book of redemption. Now it doesn't belong back to the judge anymore. It belongs to the Redeemer. And He's done, done the work of redemption. Now comes Christ, you see him in the 10th chapter of Revelation. This rider, let's discuss him. If you notice, the first rider, who he was, and we found out last night scripturally that the second rider was exactly the same man, only he is on another horse. What happened? He changed his ministry. See? Right. We found out he was an antichrist. And it changed his position. Now watch where we're at tonight, that other church age now. We're coming down to the third church age now. Just exactly on the third church age, it's just exactly like the third horse. This rider is the same one, but another stage of his ministry. Now John sees him on a black horse. He changed something else. He has started riding him in the time of the dark ages. That's what the dark horse represented. The dark ages for it was a time of midnight to the true believers Amen. that was left. His balances or his scales in his hand, you see, calling out measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny, see? Actually, that is wheat and barley is natural stab of life. That's what bread and stuff's made from. But you see, he was charging for this. Sure. Yeah. What it means that he was charging his subjects for the kind of the hope of life that he was sending out to them by making he started in that very time of making them pay. For prayer. Charging for prayer. They still do it. No venience. Because what was he doing? Capturing the wealth of the world. The scale weighing out measure of wheat for a penny, three measures of barley for a penny, the rider on a black horse. See? He was making, stripping his subjects of their money. When the Bible predicts that he holds about the wealth of the world, 
Now, notice, you see where that old money taken in church comes from? To build an organization, a big something million dollar year, charging for prayer by the priest to pray people out of purgatory, charging, I'm taking this right out of history, charging for, I guess it's Novenia, I guess what everybody knows what, Novenia, I guess that's uh, something you have to do, you know, some penance, somebody has to charge for that. <laughs> Notice, here's the good part now. Notice, see that thou hurt not this wine or just a little bit of it left, there, but don't you touch that. <laughs> now, oral is symbolizes the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. I'll give you a few verses if you want to. There's two scriptures in Leviticus 8.12 where Aaron, before he went in, had been anointed with oral, you know, and, and Zechariah 4.12, the oral coming poured through the pipes and said, this is my Spirit, oral. And another thing, if you want to see Matthew 14.25, there was a foolish virgin, 25, 3, the foolish virgin had no oral, no spirit. And Matthew 25, 4, the wise virgin had all in her land, spirit filled. Now, oral typifies spirit and wine symbolizes stimulation of revelation. <laughs> to run all over the place. Wanted to wake up the neighborhood and the Lord showed me that. Stimulation of revelation. Oil and wine in the Bible is associated together. Always. I got the concordance look, the streak of that like, uh, like that where wine and oil goes together all the time. See? Because oh, yeah. when right. the revelation has been given of a truth oh. Amen. of God and the true believer filled with oil and the revelation is revealed the stimulation becomes so great that he makes him behave himself unnormal <laughs> right. oh, yeah. see that's what's the matter with him now then what does it say to this rider in black? Don't you hurt my wine and my oil. Don't you touch it. <laughs> my wine and oil. Now I've got just a little bit of it down there, but he's still a little bit there. <laughs> yeah. Now you can go on through and measure out all that kind of life. It's your butt not. That's up to you. You're going to pay for it down there. But when you come across that wine and oil, you leave it alone. Yeah. Well, I was here. And I, and I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts. Amen. What was it? Amen. The Lamb! What's the four beasts? <laughs> the Lamb said it! Amen. Wow! Don't take his own. That belongs to him. He's Amen. 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 Don't you touch that oral now, sir. Not the four beasts, but the lamb was the one that said it. Oh, my. Amen. The lamb, not the four beasts that announced this. The lamb said itself. Well, to the best of my understanding, and the best of, that I know of, and with all that I believe in my heart, that's the true meaning of those three seals. Amen. I want to thank God for it. And I'll say this, that it's a revelation that He gave me. He gave that to me, the revelation of it. And I do believe that we're living in the last days. He's the Word. Oh, wonderful. And uh, now we're going to try tonight, by the grace of God, to take this fourth seal and uh, see what the Holy Spirit will have to say to us in it. Now, I'm going to read the uh, Revelations, the sixth chapter, and beginning with the 
seventh verse. <coughs> seventh and eighth is always two verses. The first is the announcement, and the second verse is what he saw. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth, fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him, that sat <coughs> was, was death and hell followed him, and power was given unto them over the four parts of the earth to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death and with beasts of the earth. And um, the fourth beast, the living creature, like an eagle, said to John, Come see what the fourth mystery of the uh, plan of redemption has been hid in this book. And he said, Come and see the fourth mystery of the book of redemption that's been hidden in this book. Come see. And John went to see and he saw a pale horse. And again, the same rider upon this pale horse. Now he has a name called Death. Now notice, none of the other rider, none of the other horses, or no time that this rider ever rode, they didn't have that man had no name. But now he is called Death. It's not mentioned. He's revealed now what he is is death. But now when it comes forth the eagle age, that's the one that God always likens his prophets to eagles. He calls himself an eagle. The eagle goes so high, there ain't nothing else can touch him. Amen. Not only is he up there, but he's built for that position. Amen. When he gets up there, you can see where he's at. Amen. 68 million Protestants, as we took from, from uh, Smucker's uh, uh, Glorious Reform or the, or the Martyrology of Rome last night, we find that up to the 1500 mark, I believe it was, or 18, I don't remember exactly now, but it was 68 million put to death to protest the first Roman church. Oh, no wonder he could impersonate himself in the persified uh, name of and call death. <laughs> he sure was. Now, God only knows how many he calls to spiritually die by his anti-Bible word teaching. This is the one he put 68 million to the sword and killed and probably literally billions died spiritually on his false teaching. Amen. No wonder you could take the name of death. The fourth stage of his ministry is called the beast. And in this fourth horse, if you'll notice, all the first one was white, and then the next one was red, and the next one was black, and the fourth one all of these other three was representing it because pale is red and, and uh, white and so mixed together. See? It, it is all mixed in this one horse. Now I want you to notice the four of them. Notice the off mark of four of the spiritual mathematics. God is threes. This is four. He's in four here. First, Antichrist, white. Second, false prophet, red. Third, biker of heavens and earth and, and purgatory, black. Fourth, the beast, pale horse, Satan being kicked out of heaven. You want to read that? Revelations 12 and 13. Satan being kicked out of heaven. Then in Revelation 13, 1, 8, he is incarnate in the person of the beast. He's first the Antichrist. Yes, it's the teaching called Nicolaitia. Then he becomes from that to a false prophet. If he's an Antichrist, Antichrist is against anything that's against God's word, is against God because the word is God. And then when he comes to crowning time, then he becomes the false prophet of his Antichrist teaching. Get it? 
Then he gets a sword because he unites his powers together. Then he don't have to ask nobody. He's governor of state. He's governor of heaven. Receives a triple crown. Makes his seven idea called purgatory. We find it, put it on down through the Bible. We count his numeral numbers and everything else. Here he is playing right back here in number four. Not number three, number four. See? Now let's turn. Revelation is 12. Let's just read this just a little bit because we, we'll have time to do it. And um, let's read uh, Revelation, the, the 12th chapter and the 13th verse. And when the dragon saw that he was cast out into the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. Now I see he was cast out of the earth and becomes incarnate as the antichrist spirit become incarnate into a man that man changes from one thing to another from an antichrist spirit to a false prophet and then the beast comes into him now we find out here that this satan after being kicked out of heaven incarnates himself in the beast and now he is a beast antichrist false prophet and now beast and given the name of death and hell follows him. Fully Satan on his throne. Oh my. On the earth. He's Satan representative on the earth. That he now is head of the kingdoms of the world. The very same kingdoms that he offered to the Lord Jesus in Matthew 4. Satan now becomes a full king. All right. Notice now, he be given the heart of a beast at that time, and Satan will incarnate himself. Because when the church goes up, Satan's cast oh, out. Yeah. It's done, man. All these accusing is done. See, as long as look, as long as the intercessor is still on the throne, Amen. Satan can stand there and accuse. Amen. Because he is the attorney of the other side. He is the opponent of Christ. But when our Lord appears here on earth, he'll be riding on a snow white horse and he'll be completely, fully the Emmanuel, the Amen. Word of God incarnate in a man. Amen. Well, yes, there's not much difference there is in it. That's the difference of it. Notice, the Antichrist is on a pale horse, mixed color. A horse is a beast that represents a power. His power is all mixed up. Why? It's politics. It's, um, it's national powers. It's uh, religious powers. It's demon powers. It's all kinds of powers mixed together. A mixed pale horse was. He's got all kinds of powers. But when Jesus comes, it's on a one solid color horse. Amen. The Word. Amen. 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 Fourth stage of the rider, what? The fourth stage of this rider is called death. Death means eternal separation from God. That's what death means. To be eternal separated from God. Separation from God is death. Eternal death. And this fella is called death. So keep away from him. There you are, friends. Here's the fourth seal. <laughs> open. And the riders of the four horses is revealed to the best of my knowledge. Now this is all that took place on earth. Next seal we see is in heaven where souls are under the altar. Now the fifth seal begins the sixth chapter of Revelations, the ninth verse. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, does thou judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given un unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. 
Notice, there is no mention of another beast or a living, living creature to this announcement of the fifth seal. We know that. See, there's no living creature. Notice, but here when we come to this fifth seal now, there's, uh, there's, there's no rider goes forth, and there's no beast to announce it. That is, that the mystery of the church ages are already finished at this time. The mystery of the Antichrist is revealed at this time. The Antichrist took his last ride. And we found him on this pale horse mixed with these many colors and rides all the way into perdition. That's right. They're, they're away from the church age. The church absolutely is raptured at this time. The church goes up in the fourth chapter of Revelation and does not return until it comes back with this king in the 19th chapter. But these seals here are revealing what has been, what is, and what will be. See? Notice when the Antichrist, or them, them revelations in the presence of that ball of fire hanging there in a the room. To, oh, brother. Although I've seen it since a child, every time it comes near me, the alarms, he, he almost puts in an unconscious condition. You never get used to it. You can. It's too sacred. Now, notice, now in the ninth verse, souls under the altar. Now, here's where I'm going to get some real uh, <laughs> disagreements. But I, I just watched just a minute. Yes, see, I thought that too, but it didn't come that way. We have, I've always thought that these souls under the altar were the, the, the martyrs of the early church. And I'm sure that uh, Dr. Uriah Smith and every one of them says it is, see. But I thought so myself. But when the Holy Spirit showed the vision to it, it wasn't. There isn't the soul. Now, who are these souls? That's the next thing. Who are they then if they're not the early church? This is Israel. That's to be saved as a nation. All them that are predestinated. That's Israel. That's Israel itself. For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of the mystery. <clears throat> Lest you should be wise in your own conceit. There you are. The blindness, in part, is happened to Israel until the fulfilling fullness of the Gentiles become in. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion a deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness for Jacob. What? Israel was blinded for the very purpose of us being saved. Notice. Now, I want you to watch this real close. They were given robes. They didn't have it. They were given robes. White robes, each one of them. Now, the saints now have already had one. They get it here. But there they were given robes. And the saints already had theirs and gone on. See? See, they had, had not, uh, the, this, these uh, souls, understanding now that's under the altar, why they were martyred by sinful man like Eichmann. Yeah. See? They're holding right on, millions of them. <laughs> But they remain Jews. Now remember, what was it? They were killed for the word of God's sake. Not for the testimony of Christ. Did you understand that? But remember, the church come in. Also the martyrs of the church was for the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. I mean, it was that here. here, here. All right. Now, but these didn't have the testimony of Jesus Christ. For the word of God and for the testimony which they held. The Jews. 
And Hitler hated them. So did I. So did Stalin all the rest of the world. But they stayed true to what they believed. And they killed them because they were Jews. That's right. And for their testimony they held, they were martyred. And here were souls under the altar. After the church had been gone. Now what? They had in their blindness martyred their Messiah. And now they were a reaping boy. They realized it. They recognized it. It just gone on. They seen them when they come before the altar of God. But now watch. The grace of God comes to them. And Jesus gives them each one a white robe. <laughs> watch. Put them over after the church is gone. Like Joseph did to his brethren. A tithe. Look. When Joseph stood there. And when he finally he made himself known. There by the altar. His own altar. And his palace. His throne. He said, everybody leave me. Amen. His wife was over in the palace where the bride would be. And he said to him, he said, don't you know me? Hey, he's speaking Hebrew now. I'm your brother, Joseph. Oh my, they said, now, nah. oh, you're going to get us away in a minute. Wait a minute. God did that for a purpose. Had you to throw me out in order to save life. Glory, there you are. So don't, don't be angry with yourselves. Remember Joseph said that? Which is a type of the 144,000 we'll get later. They, oh, he did? He just run right quick to Benjamin fell on his neck and started hugging him. His little brother that had been born into the family after he had been gone. By his mother. The first church, the Orthodox church, the 144,000 were born in his absence. While he's away, they get his Gentile bride. Oh, my, don't that just do something to you? Yeah. So you see who they are? There they are. These Jews, 144,000, is to be called out by the two witnesses of Revelation 11. Now, you remember, they was to prophesy. Notice, these souls are to wait a little season for the 144 to be martyred. Oh, isn't that, isn't that, this puts the Bible together. Well, listen, I just got something to tell you. It's just so good. It's just burning right in my heart. I hope you haven't forgotten it. See? Let me say this in the presence of Him. By His grace, he also let me see my people not long ago in white robes. You remember? <laughs> you remember the story? Not long ago. The Gentile bride. They're there now. They're always in white robes. Notice this now. Now, if there's no altar of sacrifice in heaven... Where is the sacrifice for sin land? The lamb. There has to be a place where that slain lamb, bloody, is laying there. Or the blood is... Or I do think, brother, by the opening of this fifth seal, as I believe that it's open to it. I did it with good conscience, with clear revelation before God, not trying to just make it think because I always was against the organization, never would belong to him, but it's open to me now. Now, we notice now as we go into the sixth seal, now may the Heavenly Father help us as we settle down now to this sixth seal. Now, this twelfth verse of the sixth chapter and I beheld when he opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell unto earth, even as a fig tree cast her untimely figs when she's shaken of a mighty wind. And the heavens departed as a scroll when it's rolled together. 
every mountain and every island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth and the great man and the rich man and the chief captains and the mighty man and every bond and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him that set up on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come and who shall be able to stand? If we find out now, John said, I beheld when he opened the sixth seal, there was a great earthquake. Then all nature was interrupted. See, but we find out here that nature took a tumble. Yes, all nature. Look what taking place. The, the earthquake, the sun went black and the moon would give its light. The stars shook and fell and why, everything happened. See? Right at the time of the opening of this sixth seal. That's when it takes place. Right immediately after the announcement of those martyrs. Okay? The martyrs have been finished. Now you see we're right close into that hour now. We could be at any time. Amen. See, because the church is just about ready to take its flight. But remember... When these things happen, the bride won't be here. Just remember, the bride's gone. She don't have to go through any of it. This is a time of tribulation, of purification of the, uh, of the church. It's put up on her for her to go through it. Not the bride. He takes his sweetheart out of the way. <laughs> That's her. She's done redeemed her. See, it's kind of a... That's his own selection, his own choice, like any man who takes his bride. Now, the earthquake compares scriptures of this great event that we will see that this great secret or uh, mystery that was under the sixth seal of the book of redemption. Now remember, these are hidden mysteries. And the six seals all together is one great big book. The six scrolls roll together. And it unwinds the whole book of redemption. That's how the whole earth was redeemed. That's the reason John wept. Because if no one could get that book, all creation, everything was gone. She just simply turned back to, to... the atoms and molecules and so forth and cosmic light and not even be creation, person, nothing else. Because Adam lost the rights of that book. He forfeited it when he listened to his wife and she listened to Satan's reasonings instead of the Word of God. See? It was forfeited. Then it couldn't go back into the dirty hands of Satan who tempted her out of the way. So therefore... It went back to its original owner like any abstract deed would do, see? It goes right back to its original owner, and that was God, the Creator who made it. And He holds it. Now, here, let's start out now and let's read uh, St. Matthew, the 24th chapter. Now, I'd just like to give you something here I've just looked up to find. Now, St. Matthew from 1 to 3... Well, it's where we go to read first. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the building of the temple. And he said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be one be left here, one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. These three verses, it took place actually on Tuesday afternoon, April the 4th, A.D. 30. And the first two verses took place on the afternoon of, the, of April the 4th and A.D. 30. And the third verse taken place on Tuesday evening of the same day. See? Now notice, here is, here is three questions are asked by the Jews, his disciples. Three questions are asked. What? What? Um, uh, first, first, what, when shall these things be? When there won't be one stone left upon another. 
What shall be the sign of thy coming? Second question. And of the end of the world. See it? There's three questions. See, just exactly comparing what Jesus said in Matthew 24 and what the revelator here opened up in the sixth seal is just exactly, and Jesus was speaking of the tribulation period. See? The sixth seal is the tribulation period. That's what takes place. The bride has gone. See? There's no living creature, nothing there to say it. It's just, now God is not dealing with the church no more. It's been gone. He's dealing with Israel. This is the other side. This is when Israel received the message of the kingdom by the two prophets of Revelation 11. Remember, Israel is a nation. God's servant nation. And when, when, when Israel is brought in, it'll be a, a national affair. And um, that's when they're supposed to be delivered. Now, let, let's we get to Daniel 12 here just a minute. And at that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince which stood for the children, for, for the children of thy people. See? That's Jews. And there shall be a trouble such never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. Now, I'll compare that exactly what Jesus said, Matthew 24. There shall be a time of trouble has never been since there was a nation. Look at the sixth seal. See? The same thing, a time of trouble. Notice. Since there was a nation, even to the same time. And at that time, thy people now, in this seven, last part of the seventh year, thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. The predestinated, you see, that's written in the Lamb's book of life, shall be delivered at that time. And many of those that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, and some to everlasting life, and some to everlasting shame and contentment. Now, and then shall the wise shine as the brightness of the firmament, and, and they that turn many to righteousness shall shine as the stars forever and ever. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, that they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks that stand before the God of the earth. If any man hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth, devour their enemies. And if any man shall hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. See? There it is. They can speak what they want to, and there it happens. Amen. Brother, God rides on the scene here. They have power to, sh uh, uh, power to shut the heavens that it rain not in the days of their prophecy and have power over the waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with plagues as off as they will. What is it? God can bring these things but the Word. They can do nature any way they want to. Here it is. They're the one who brings on this sixth seal. They uncover and open it up. It's a power of God. To interrupt nature. See, the sixth seal is completely an interruption of nature. Do you get it now? There's your seal. Who does it? It's the prophets. The other side of the rapture. And here he is with a commission from God to smite the earth wherever he wants to. Oh, my. Stop the heavens. And he does. What's the matter? He's fixing to take the 144,000 out for redemption. Out of the book of redemption, and that's under the seal of redemption. And the sixth seal. That's it, my dear friend. That's that sixth seal. It's been so mysterious. And here is a word taking what he has given to me and blending it together and showing you so you know yourself it's thus, saith the Lord. See? Notice, now we're going to read in the Bible in the, the seventh seal. That's found in Revelation, the eighth chapter. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of a half hour. And that's all we have. Now, we're going to notice, I remember, 
after the fourth chapter of Revelations, the church is gone. After the the uh, four harsh riders has went out, the church is gone. See? And then they were Satan and his angels was kicked out. And then they come to the earth and the battle set in again because Eve broke down the barrier from where she was uh, isolated behind the Word of God. You believe in God's mathematics? If you don't, you're sure lost. In the, you'll sure get lost in the Word. If you start putting a four or six or, or something besides this, the mathematical words running in order, you'll sure have in your scene a cow picking grass on top of a tree somewhere. You'll you certainly run out because God does not... His whole word does run completely in, in, in mathematics. Yes, sir. perfect, the most perfect. There's no other literature written like it, like it. So perfect in math- mathematics. Now, the, the eighth chapter only reveals the scene of uh, the scene of the seventh seal where nothing else is revealed. Now, nothing. All the way back from Genesis, the seventh chapter, the seventh seal is, is spoke of. From the very beginning in Genesis, the seventh, Jesus Christ is speaking himself, told of the end time. And when he got, told all se- six seals, when he got the seventh, he stopped. There it is. See? It's a great thing. And nowhere through the church age, since in the early apostolic church, has the Protestant church ever had a prophet? Tell me who it was. Show me. Never. But we are promised in the last day that to return to the church again for the benefit of straightening up all that has been misled, misundone, left undone, for it's predicted here that the seventh angel's message would finish the mysteries of God. Amen. Now we went through it all. We see that it's perfectly in harmony with the scripture. That's the reason. Now, could you imagine when this person comes on the scene? When he does, remember, it'll be so humble and things the, the churches will miss it a long ways. If there be one among you who's spiritual or a prophet, I, the Lord, my, thy God, will make myself known to him and speak to him in visions through dreams, to interpret dreams. Somebody have a dream, the prophet will be able to interpret it. And if, uh, if he has a vision, he speaks it, I'll make myself known to him through visions and dreams. Make myself known. And if what he says comes to pass, then hear that prophet because I'm with him. Now, We'll turn now to the eighth verse of the uh, or the first verse I mean of the eighth chapter Revelation one, uh, eight one. We must remember that this seventh seal is the end of time of all things. Right. The things written in the seventh seal book sealed up of the plan of redemption from before the foundation world had ever been ends. It is the end it is the end of the struggling world, it's the end of struggling nature, it's the end of everything. In there is the end of the trumpets, it's the end of the vials, it's the end of the earth, it's a, it's even the end of time. Time runs out. The Bible said so. It's the end of the vials and even in the ushering in of the millennium. That's on the seventh seal. It's just like firing a rocket into the air. And that rocket explodes here, and it goes up, then it explodes again. It puts out five stars. One of those stars explodes and blows out five stars from it. And then one of them stars explodes, blows out five stars from it. See? It fades on out. Now, how's he going to do it? That's what we don't know, is it? We don't know. Notice, the breaking of this seal was so great that heaven was hushed by it in silence for the space of a half hour. 
not is it great? What is it? It was hushed. Heavens. There wasn't a thing moved for a half hour. When the seven sealed mystery in the book of redemption broke open. Think of it. But it's broke. Amen. The lamb breaks it. You know what? They were awed by it, I believe. They didn't know. There it was. They just stopped. Why? What is it? I'm going to tell you my, my revelation of it. And now, as certain as I stand in the platform tonight, I had the revelation that revealed it's in a threefold manner. Sit in there. When this left me, something just come to me and said, don't fear. Now, I didn't hear no voice. Like on the inside of me spoke. I have to just tell you the truth. This is exactly what happened. Something hit and said, don't fear. This is that third pull. I was standing with a, a little baby shoe. When he told me, Sam, make your first pull. And when you do, the fish will run after the lure. Said so then, watch your second pull. Said, because it'll only be small fish. He said, then the third pull will get it. And there's three great things that goes with it. And one unfolded today or yesterday. The other one unfolded today. And there's one thing that I cannot interpret because it's in an unknown language. But I stand right there and look right straight at it. And this is the third pull coming up. Amen. That's the reason all heaven was silent. Amen. Remember, the seventh messenger was the seven messengers was the noted one to me, the seventh angel. It seemed more to me than any. I see that we're standing like this. And I was standing here and I was watching those other, see, one first bunch of little birds, feathers all beat down. You remember them? And they all flew eastward. And the second bunch were brighter, bigger birds, looked like doves, pointed wings. They flew eastward. First bull, second bull. Then the next was angels. And it's, I was standing right there, and this explosion left, and I was looking this way towards the west, and they come and just picked me up in there, and I went plumbing out of my knowing. And the one of them coming was the one that looks strange to me, was the one on my beat the left where I entered the constellation at, but counting from the left to the right, it would have been the seventh angel okay, coming across. Now, remember, the seven messengers. Do you remember the pyramid of white rock? Now notice this, that now when this taking place, Junior was standing in a field that had a had a big pyramid to it like that, and there was something wrote on the rocks, and I was revealing that to the people. Is that right, Junior? About a year before it happened. And notice the next thing now. I took some kind of a bar and cut it off, and on the inside was white rock that had nothing wrote on it. And at that time, I started to the west. And I told them all, I said, don't go out west, stay here. And look on this till I return. Went west for the blast, returned back to the east with the Holy Spirit interpreted this unwritten word. Amen. Amen. Now, that isn't perfect. The, the God Almighty, I don't want you to know what is. But I know that it was them seven thunders uttering themselves right close together, just banging seven different times. And it unfolded into something else that I seen. Then when I seen that, I looked for the interpretation. It flew across there, and I couldn't make it out. That's exactly right. The, the hour isn't quite yet far. Amen. What happens is that those seven thunders that he heard thunder and was forbidden to write. That's what the mystery is laying behind those seven consecutive thunders rolling out. Now, why? Let us prove it. Why? It is the secret that no one knows about. John was forbidding to write about it, even, even write a symbol about it. 
Why? This is why there was uh, no active in he- activity in heaven. It might give away the secret. Do you see it now? Amen. But here is seven straight thunders right in a row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That perfect number. Then, heavens couldn't write that. Heavens can't know about it. Nothing else because there's nothing to go on. It's a relaxing time. It was so great till it's kept secret from the angels. Now, why? If Satan should get a hold of it, he might do great damage. That's one thing he don't know. If they made one move, it might give something away. So they just shut up. Quit harping. Everything stop. Uh, seven, God's perfect number. Seven is right down the road. Seven thunders uttered straight together. Like you're spelling out something. Notice, at that time, John started writing. He said, don't write it. Jesus never spoke of it. John couldn't write it. Angels know nothing about it. Amen. What is it? It's the thing that Jesus said even the angels of heaven didn't know nothing about it. See? Yeah. see? He didn't know it himself. Amen. Said only God would know it. Amen. Now, what this great secret is that lays beneath this seal... I do not know. I don't know it. I couldn't make it out. I couldn't tell it. Just what it just what it said. But I know that it was them seven thunders uttering themselves right close together, just banging seven different times. But it's moving into that cycle. See, it's coming up close. So the thing for you to do is to remember that I speak to you in the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And here when the seventh seal, when he opened it, he also omitted it again. See? So we see that it is a complete mystery. Therefore, the hour is not yet for this mystery to be known. Therefore, we're this far and the rest of it will be known right around about the time that Jesus appears on earth again for his bride or whatever takes place at that time. Now until that time, let's just all pray Live good, straight Christian lives, looking forward for His coming. Now the vision, plus the Word, plus the history, plus the church ages, and all blend together. So I could truly say that to the best of my understanding, and according to the Word of God, and the vision, and the revelation, the interpretation thereof is, Thus saith the Lord. Now may the Lord bless you all, each one, real richly. As we stand now and sing uh, this good old song of the church, God bless you each one. Amen.